Marianne Bachmeier, A Mother's Vengeance in the heart of Germany, against the backdrop of heartache and injustice, a woman named Marianne Bachmeier found herself at the center of an extraordinary tale. Born on June 3, 1950, her life would become an enduring testament to a mother's unwavering love and an unyielding pursuit of justice. In the District Court of Lübeck in 1981, a chilling act of vigilantism unfolded. Marianne Bachmeier, fueled by indescribable grief, took justice into her own hands. The man on trial was Klaus Grabowski, accused of the unspeakable crimes of rape and murder, crimes that had torn Marianne's world apart. This gripping story not only ignited the passions of those who followed it, but also captivated the nation, leading to extensive media coverage and passionate public debate. But justice, as it often is, proved to be a complex and divisive concept. Marianne's actions led to her conviction for manslaughter and unlawful possession of a firearm. She faced a sentence of six years behind bars, a sentence that would test the boundaries of compassion and retribution. Yet, Marianne's journey was far from over. After serving three years, she embarked on a path that would take her far from her homeland. She moved abroad, seeking solace and a fresh start. But life had more trials in store. Join us as we delve deep into the life of Marianne Bachmeier, a woman whose story resonates with the depths of human emotion and the relentless pursuit of justice, even when it means challenging the very foundations of the law. This is her story, a story of love, tragedy, and the unyielding strength of a mother's resolve. Youth and Family Marianne Bachmeier's early years were marred by adversity, shaping the trajectory of her life in ways she could never have anticipated. She was born on June 3, 1950, in the serene town of Sarstedt, nestled near Hildesheim in Lower Saxony, West Germany. Her family's roots traced back to East Prussia, where her parents had sought refuge after the ravages of the Second World War. Marianne's upbringing was firmly rooted in conservatism and religious devotion, her father, once a member of the Waffen-SS, cast a long shadow as the stern and authoritative figure of the household. He was a heavy drinker, and the local bar near their family home became his second dwelling, further darkening the atmosphere within their walls. The family's existence was far from harmonious. Her father's drinking habit amplified his aggression, making their home a place of discomfort and unease. The strain took its toll, eventually leading to her parents' divorce. Her mother later remarried, introducing Marianne to a new father figure. It was this dictatorial stepfather who branded Marianne as a troubled adolescent, a label that would alter the course of her life. The situation deteriorated to the point where her mother felt compelled to expel her from the family home. At the tender age of 16, Marianne faced the overwhelming responsibility of motherhood for the first time. Overwhelmed by the circumstances, she made the heart-wrenching decision to place her first child up for adoption as an infant. Tragedy continued to follow Marianne as she became pregnant again at the age of 18, this time by her boyfriend. Just before the birth of her second child, she endured a traumatic event rape. Her second child, like the first, was placed for adoption as an infant. The year 1972 marked a significant turning point in Marianne's life. She entered into a relationship with the manager of Tipesa, a local pub where they both worked. At the age of 22, Marianne found herself pregnant for the third time. On November 14, 1972, Marianne welcomed her third child into the world, Anna. Raising Anna as a single mother, Marianne faced the dual challenges of motherhood and employment. Anna often accompanied her to the pub, becoming a fixture of Marianne's life. In 1984, two documentary films, No Time for Tears, The Bachmeier Case and Anna's Mother, shed light on Marianne's life as a single mother. These films portrayed a woman who worked late into the night and slept through the day, leaving her seven-year-old daughter to fend for herself. Marianne was acutely aware of the shortcomings in her lifestyle, and she contemplated placing Anna up for adoption. Friends recounted how she treated Anna like a little adult, expecting her to shoulder responsibilities well beyond her years. Anna, despite the challenges, remained a vibrant and resilient youngster. Yet, 
Her family life was marred by turbulence and instability, a poignant precursor to the tragedy that would later shatter their world. Murder of her daughter On May 5, 1980, when Anna was seven years old, she had an argument with her mother and decided to skip school. On this day she was abducted by Klaus Grabowski, a 35-year-old butcher whose home she had visited before to play with his cats. He held Anna for several hours at his home, sexually assaulted her, and ultimately strangled her with a pair of his fiancée's tights. According to the prosecutor, he then tied the girl up and packed her into a box, which he left on the shore of a canal. Grabowski's fiancé then turned him into the police. Grabowski was a convicted sex offender and had previously been sentenced for the sexual abuse of two girls. In 1976, he voluntarily submitted to chemical castration, though it was later revealed that he subsequently underwent hormone treatment to try to reverse the castration. Once arrested, Grabowski stated that Anna wanted to tell her mother that he had abused her to extort money from him. He said his fear of going back to prison prompted him to kill her. Vigilante Justice in the Courtroom The shocking act of vigilante justice that occurred in the Lubeck District Courtroom on March 6, 1981, sent shockwaves throughout the legal system in Germany and beyond. The assailant, who was identified as Bachmeier, had smuggled a Beretta 70 into the courtroom, marking a chilling breach of security within the judicial process. The events that unfolded that fateful morning were nothing short of a nightmare. As the trial continued into its third day, tension hung heavily in the air. Bachmeier, fueled by what she claimed was a desire for justice, took matters into her own hands in a brutal and devastating manner. She positioned herself strategically behind Grabowski, her target, and, with chilling precision, fired her weapon seven times. The courtroom, previously a symbol of law and order, was instantly transformed into a scene of chaos and tragedy. Grabowski, the victim, bore the brunt of Bachmeier's wrath. Six of the seven shots fired found their mark, and Grabowski was killed almost instantaneously. The entire courtroom was thrown into disarray as panic and confusion swept through the spectators, legal professionals, and the accused. Bachmeier, perhaps astonishingly, made no attempt to flee the scene. After the horrific act, she calmly lowered her gun and offered no resistance as authorities apprehended her. Her surrender was, in itself, an eerie contrast to the violent and chaotic episode that had just unfolded moments earlier. Her actions, while undoubtedly shocking and morally reprehensible, left many questions unanswered about the factors that had driven her to commit such a heinous act of vigilante justice within the very institution meant to administer lawful justice. In the wake of this tragic incident, the German legal system was forced to confront serious security concerns within its courtrooms. This shocking act underscored the vulnerabilities that existed and prompted a reevaluation of security measures and procedures. It also prompted a broader societal discussion about the role of vigilante justice, the limits of the legal system, and the potential consequences of allowing grievances to fester without proper channels for resolution. The legacy of this horrific incident in the Lubeck District Courtroom continues to cast a long shadow over discussions of justice, security, and the balance between the rule of law and the deeply held emotions that can drive individuals to take matters into their own hands. Public Reaction The incident in the Lubeck District Courtroom in 1981 had a profound and divisive impact on public opinion in West Germany. It quickly became one of the most widely recognized cases of vigilante justice in the country's history, drawing extensive media coverage both nationally and internationally. Television crews from various corners of the world flocked to Lubeck to report on the case, highlighting the shock and fascination it had generated. One particularly noteworthy aspect of the aftermath was Bachmeier's decision to sell her life story to the news magazine Stern for a substantial sum, approximately 100,000 Deutsche Marks. This payment allowed her to cover her legal costs and marked a controversial turn in the story's trajectory. During Bachmeier's time in custody, she received an outpouring of support from certain segments of the public. Messages of encouragement, gifts, and flowers arrived at her confinement, reflecting a certain level of empathy and understanding for her actions. 
Many believed that her actions were driven by a profound sense of injustice and a desire for retribution against the man she saw as her daughter's abuser. However, public sentiment on Bachmeier's actions was far from unanimous. There were individuals who staunchly believed that a constitutional state should not condone or excuse acts of vigilante justice. The complex ethical and legal questions raised by her actions generated a spirited debate throughout society. Public opinion experienced a significant shift when Stern published Bachmeier's life story, which unveiled unsettling details about her past, including her first two children and her father's connection to the SS. This revelation transformed her public image from that of an innocent mother seeking justice to a more complex and controversial figure. Despite this, there remained a substantial number of individuals who openly demonstrated their compassion for her retaliatory action, reflecting the deep emotional resonance of her case. The West German judiciary was also subjected to criticism from many quarters. Critics argued that the legal system had allowed a man who had sexually abused two girls to use hormones in an attempt to regain his libido, raising questions about the effectiveness of the justice system in dealing with cases of sexual abuse and the protection of victims' rights. The public reaction to this case underscored the complexities of vigilante justice and the deep-seated emotions and moral dilemmas it can evoke. It became a symbol of the broader societal discussions about the limits of the legal system, the consequences of abuse, and the role of empathy and understanding in the face of extreme circumstances. Sentence for Manslaughter the legal proceedings that followed the shocking act of violence in the Lubeck District Courtroom were marked by intense debate and legal deliberations. On November 2, 1982, Bachmeier was initially charged in court with the crime of murder, a charge that carried severe penalties and implications. However, the course of the trial would soon take a significant turn. As the legal proceedings unfolded, the prosecution eventually dropped the murder charge against Bachmeier. After 28 days of rigorous negotiations, the board overseeing the case reached a verdict. This decision came after months of intense scrutiny and legal analysis, weighing the complex factors surrounding the incident. On March 2, 1983, a little over four months since the proceedings had first commenced, Bachmeier received her verdict from the circuit court chamber of the District Court of Lübeck. She was convicted, not of murder but of the lesser charge of manslaughter, along with an additional charge of unlawful possession of a firearm. This marked a pivotal moment in the case, as the severity of the charges significantly influenced the sentence that would be imposed. Crucially, the court upheld a key argument presented by the defense that the act was not premeditated. This distinction played a crucial role in determining the degree of culpability assigned to Bachmeier for her actions in the courtroom that tragic day. Ultimately, Bachmeier was sentenced to six years in prison for her role in the fatal shooting. However, she did not serve the full sentence. After spending three years behind bars, she was released, marking the conclusion of a legal journey that had captured the nation's attention and ignited intense debates about justice, retribution, and the consequences of vigilante actions within the legal system. Bachmeier's case stands as a stark reminder of the complexities inherent in the criminal justice system, where the determination of charges and the resulting sentences can be influenced by a multitude of factors, including the nuances of intent and premeditation. It continues to be a subject of study and debate, offering valuable insights into the legal and ethical dilemmas posed by vigilante justice and the application of the law in cases that defy easy categorization. Subsequent Public Coverage the aftermath of the courtroom shooting continued to captivate public attention for years after the incident. In 1994, a significant 13 years after the shooting, Bachmeier broke her silence by granting an interview to the Dutch Landfunk radio station. This marked a pivotal moment as she began to publicly discuss her motivations and actions on that fateful day. The same year, her autobiography was published by the German publisher Schneekle Verlag. This memoir provided a first-hand account of her life, her experiences leading up to the shooting, and her perspectives on the tragic events that unfolded. It offered a deeper insight into the mind of a woman who had taken the law into her own hands and was willing to share her perspective with the world. 
One of the most significant revelations came on September 21, 1995, when Bachmeier appeared on the television talk show Fleege on Das Erste. During this appearance, she publicly admitted to shooting Grabowski after careful consideration, citing her desire to enforce the law on him and prevent him from further spreading lies about Anna. This confession was a momentous event in the ongoing saga of the case, as it shed new light on her motivations and the deeply held convictions that had driven her to commit such a violent act of vigilantism. In a 2006 documentary aired on ARD, a former friend of Bachmeier's added another layer of complexity to the case. This friend alleged that Bachmeier had actually rehearsed the shooting in the basement under Tip Asa, further emphasizing the calculated nature of her actions. The revelation that she may have meticulously planned the act raised even more questions about her state of mind and the depth of her commitment to her cause. Throughout these various public appearances and revelations, Bachmeier remained unapologetic for her act of vengeance. Her unwavering stance and refusal to express remorse continued to divide public opinion and fuel discussions about the limits of justice, the consequences of vigilantism, and the enduring impact of the courtroom shooting. The ongoing coverage and revelations surrounding the case of Bachmeier and Grabowski serve as a stark reminder of the complexities of human emotions, the search for justice, and the blurred lines between right and wrong in the face of profound personal conviction. Death In the autumn of 1996, the world bid farewell to a remarkable woman who had touched the hearts of many. Marianne Bachmeier, a beacon of strength and courage in the face of adversity, had been battling pancreatic cancer for several months. As her health deteriorated, she made a poignant decision that would leave a lasting impact on those who followed her journey. Before her passing, Marianne Bachmeier sought to shed light on the harsh reality of living with a terminal illness. She invited reporter Lucas Maria Bomer of Norddeutscher Rundfunk to accompany her and document the final stages of her life. Her intention was clear, to share her experiences, her pain, and her unwavering spirit with the world. Lucas Maria Bomer, reporter Marianne Bachmeier, was a woman of incredible strength. She wanted her story to be a testament to the human spirit and a source of inspiration for others facing similar battles. In the documentary, Marianne Bachmeier shared her hopes, fears, and the profound impact her illness had on her family and friends. Her vulnerability and honesty resonated deeply with viewers around the world, sparking conversations about the importance of early detection and the support needed for those facing terminal diseases. Tragically, on September 17, 1996, Marianne Bachmeier passed away at the age of 46. She had fought her battle with incredible grace and dignity, leaving an indelible mark on the hearts of those who had followed her journey. Marianne Bachmeier's legacy lives on, not just through the documentary that bears witness to her final days, but also through the countless lives she touched with her courage and resilience. She is laid to rest beside her beloved daughter, Anna, in Bergtor Cemetery, Lubeck, where their spirits find solace together. In death, as in life, Marianne Bachmeier's spirit continues to inspire and remind us of the importance of cherishing every moment, supporting one another, and confronting life's challenges with unwavering determination. Final Thoughts Marianne's legacy lives on in the lessons she taught us about resilience, love, and the enduring human spirit. Thank you for joining us on this journey of discovery and inspiration. May Mary and S. memory continue to shine brightly in our hearts and minds, reminding us that, in life and in death, we are all capable of making a profound impact on the world. Before we close, we invite you, our cherished viewers, to be part of our community. If you've been moved by Marianne Bachmeier's story, and if you believe in the power of documentaries to inspire and educate, please consider subscribing to our channel. By doing so, you'll stay updated on our latest projects and join us in honoring the legacies of extraordinary individuals like Marianne. We also encourage you to share your thoughts and ideas with us. Your input is invaluable as we embark on new journeys to explore captivating stories and untold histories. Please leave your comments below, suggesting topics for future documentaries, and let your voice be heard. Thank you for being a part of our documentary family. Together, we can continue to shed light on the stories that deserve to be told and celebrate the indomitable spirit of the human experience. 
Until our next exploration, may you find inspiration in the lives we've shared, and may your own stories be filled with hope, resilience, and the enduring quest for knowledge.